Why should not one woman acknowledge that she can take more exercise than another? Or in other words, that she has a sound constitution? And why, to damp innocent vivacity, is she darkly to be told that men will draw conclusions which she thinks little of? Let the libertine draw what inference he pleases, but I hope that no sensible mother will restrain the natural frankness of youth by instilling such indecent cautions. Women ought to endeavour to purify their heart. But can they do so when their uncultivated understandings make them entirely dependent on their senses for employment and amusement? When no noble pursuits set them above the petty vanities of the day or enables them to curb the wild emotions that agitate a reed over which every passing breeze has power? To gain affections of a virtuous man, is affectation necessary? To gain affections of a virtuous man, affection, virtuous man, of a virtuous man, to gain affections is affectation necessary. Weakness may excite tenderness and gratify the arrogant pride of man. Arrogant pride of man. Of man. Weakness may excite tenderness and gratify arrogant pride, but the lordly caresses of a protector will not gratify a noble mind that pants for and deserves to be respected. Fondness is a poor substitute for friendship. A noble mind that pants for and deserves to be respected. Fondness is... But the lordly caresses of a of a protector will not gratify a noble mind. That pants for and deserves to be respected. Fondness is a poor substitute for friendship. Dear, dear, dear. Dear. It, it appears, appears to me impossible that I should cease to exist, or that this active, restless spirit, equally alive to joy and sorrow, should be only organised dust, ready to fly abroad the moment the spring snaps, or the spark goes out, which kept, kept it together. Surely something resides in this heart that is not perishable, and life is more than a dream.